Hi guys, so we're on set of Economic Village Focus episode 4. We are somewhere in Ifo local government and our focus today will be on Olubodu in Bogolao and he's the MD of Belua Farms Limited. And so we understand that agriculture is an important part of the Nigerian economy and for Nigeria to reach its economic growth we need to um, focus more on agriculture and farming and so we'll be featuring a young Nigerian that is so passionate about farming. He's going to share tips on how to start a business and how to run your business and make money with it. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Economic Village. Yes, so um, this is our feed meal, um, the Glorious Villa Farms feed meal, and this is a sample of our uh, fish feed products. Now, this is where we produce the feed. Now, in feed production, is very, very important. In fact, in the um, costing of fish farming, feed, feeding takes about 70% um, of your whole total running cost. So that's why this is the heart of rearing fish farming. So basically, uh, it goes from step to step. There are raw materials that are always involved in um, feed production. And as much as we're a big farm, we try to reduce our cost of production by simply planting many of all the raw materials that are needed. For example, on our farm estate, we had a section where we planted maize. After harvesting the maize, the cassava, they took turn. So as we speak right now, and we have started harvesting the cassava that we are going to use in feed production. This is going to reduce our total cost because of when you probably please you've already planted the cassava, we are not buying it. Cost is already at the barest minimum, thereby giving us as much profit as we can get. Unlike any farmer that is going out there to go and buy a finished product like this. So those are the advantages that we have. And in the feed mill, the process starts from the crusher. So right there we have the crusher, all the big big junks of uh, fish feed raw materials which is the GNT, PKC um, and probably sometimes maize and GNT is granite cake that is um, the byproduct from granite when granite is being processed the oil is extracted now the remnant of the granite is being compressed into cake yes it comes out as GNT and GNT is a source of plant protein for the, for the fish because of the fish feed formulation it's very important that your fish must eat balanced diet they must eat balanced diet, they must have the plant protein, animal protein. We also have the fish meal. The fish meal is very, very is the most expensive part of the raw material. And then as much as we are fish farmers, we try to reduce the cost of that because we are into processing of fish too. And every time we process fish, every part of the fish that is not being used, we also use it to produce the feed. Because all we are doing is to reduce our cost and ensure that fish is very cheap. Because as we speak right now, food is very expensive in this country. We are sorry for food insecurity. And the only thing we can do as a fish farmer that has the populace at heart, because one of our mission is that one of our mission statements is providing food at a cheap cost for Nigerians. Because of we discovered that many children suffer from protein deficiency. And the only way we can come in is producing fish at the cheapest cost for them. And so in our factory, we have the wet mixer, we have the dry mixer, we have the pelleting machine, and we have the grinding machine too. All these go hand in hand. All this go on and on because without one machine, work cannot be efficient. And in the factory, the major thing is efficiency. Make sure your machine is working very efficient. If we look on the left hand side now, we have the dough. The dough is like, um, for example, in the processing line, in the production line of biscuits, when you are mixing the flour, the flour that does not come out as biscuit is the dough. If you bring it out now, you discover that it's still wet, it's still sticky, it still has the aroma of butter and sugar and everything inside. So, this is the dough. The dough is majorly used as a binding force in feed production. Because of before the feed can come out in this pellet form, this is a pellet feed. Before it can come out like this, it needs something to bind it together. Because of they are all dry, different feed entirely that makes up this. So for it to come out like this, we need a binding force. We use molasses. Molasses is a byproduct from sugar. So molasses together with, with our dough gives us the binding force that makes it come out of the pelleting machine. And pelleting machine comes in different sizes. I'm holding the 4.5 feed. We have the 6mm, we have the 8mm, we have the 3mm, depending on the size of the fish. And to determine the size of the fish is the head of the fish. Um, this is the processing machine that we use to process our fish. Uh, because um, the joy and the beauty of rearing of fish is the value addition. And it also has a major advantage, which is, which is not relying on the market women to come and buy your fish. The moment you have this processing machine, irrespective of whatever price they negotiate with you, you can always bring it back to your processing house, then you process your fish. Um, outside there, the, the, 
developed countries that are more interested in the kind of product that you bring to make. Just like we have the geisha, we have the sardine, we have the cypress, all those canned food that we make. So this is what we do basically um, right now. For now, and this processing machine can process anything. You can do bolly, you can do fish, you can do chicken, you can do turkey. And um, looking at the processing machine, you can see that it has a temperature controller, which is the So this one, we also use it to control the temperature of the heat that is inside this place. And we have each of these trays. This is the fish tray, where we arrange the fish. And we have the oil collecting tray. We have, we have the oil collecting tray. The oil collecting tray. This one is to... Now there was an incident that happened here years back in our processing house. We are using the wooden type before, double deck. This is what we published. So yeah, the oil... The oil um, had contacts with the wood shavings and the whole processing house caught fire. So that brought up the innovation and the idea that why don't separate the oil that is coming in from the fire that is going there. And that's why we have the oil collecting tray here. And we have the charcoal pots here. So this charcoal pot, the heat goes round through convention, and each of these is separate chambers. This thing is live. So this one is a shawl, it's just basic, and we do not use any form of petrochemical to ignite the fire. There is a basic compound that if it is found in your food substance, it will not, it is cancerous, and it cannot leave this country. So what do we use? We use Obusho. Yeah, we use Obusho to rekindle the fire. Uh, just to make sure that uh, the food we are putting out there is very safe. So, Bolan, can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, um, good afternoon. And first of all, you are welcome to Glorious Villa Farm Estate. And I happen to be, my name is Bolan Lubodu. And I happen to be the managing director of Glorious Villa Farms Company. Yeah, and we are basically and solely into fish farming. We cut across every division, division of fish farming, from the rearing part to the fish production to the archery, to the feed milling, to the to the processing and also we are into training and consultancy services. So I personally I have started I started um this business when I was still very little, though not official then. But you know what this one or two uh you brought by result and we are going to watch the pond, that kind of thing. But at time grew by I had interest, the passion began to my passion for the business rose especially when I was in founder level. So from then I also said, okay, I was gonna go full into agriculture. Then I found myself here today into fish farming. And I think I'm enjoying what I'm doing with passion and I'm ready to go full into it. Yeah. yeah, you spoke about passion, but what was the root motivation for you when you were in founder level? What did you see? What was the big picture for you? Yeah, so um now I'm gonna what really happened was I, I studied electrical engineering in school and when I was in founder level, I was, I was looking for IT placement. I can clearly remember that that was what changed my mind. Then I sat down and thought to myself one day and I woke up and I was like, if if I have fish farming at my fingertip and I'm busy check, looking for where I'm going to get a job in electrical engineering, then something is wrong with me. Then I, feel, I started feeling like a prodigal son. Like, what's wrong? If I have fish farming right here and this is the fish farming that more or less sent me to school, then what am I doing? Looking for a job in electrical engineering, and I said, "Okay, um, let's see what I can do in doing um, in fish farming." And and there's more to career choices, you know, when you are doing the right thing, and you discover that I I actually did everything I'm doing. I like to balance it with the spiritual part too. So I discovered that when I started into the fish farming, just clicked. The first that particular final level, I was called up to come and like give lectures in like three different locations. So I just everything just seemed like. Like I've been sleeping all this while, I've been sleeping on these things since what am I doing? So just feel like man, this is it, this is it. So yeah, the big picture is just about providing food for the Nigerian people at the cheapest cost possible. At the same time enriching people that are interested in doing it and showing them that there's a way in agriculture, there's a way in fish farming. We just need to go into this thing and see what's going on there. Yes, so we understand that farming is really important for Nigerian people and many people want to go into farming. So um Many people go into farming without owning the land. Can you expand on that and how profitable do you think that um, area is when you don't own the land? Yeah, um, going into fish farming is a very, very lucrative business, but at the same time, it just can be capital intensive. We, right now, we already have startup companies that are doing um, investment platforms that 
you don't necessarily need to own the land before you can invest into fish farming. But then the beauty of fish farming is when you have to wake up in the morning and pour feed inside your pond and see your fish react to it. That is one of those adjustments. But then at the same time, there are a lot of people that still, and at the time you are planning, probably you are, you are a young student and you have interest in this business, but you don't have the time. We have company, we have a setup that can accommodate you. You probably give us that's capital um, capital investment to give us certain amount of money. We put it into the fish business. Then at the end of the month, we give you a returns. But at the same time, if you are going to any business, it's necessary for you to have the background knowledge, the basic understanding of what you are doing, so that uh, you won't have to mix things up, so that you don't have to lose money at the end of the day. Understanding is very key. Knowledge is also power, especially in this business that we're doing. Yeah. Um. You. So how? supportive has the government been in terms of you know giving tax um loans and tax moratoriums for for people that just want to start the farming business the agricultural business in nigeria from your own point of view yeah first of all we have to understand that for agriculture to thrive in any country or nation that we are in right now um the government has to be supportive of it and i won't lie to you but the development that we have achieved so far in this administration agriculture has been on the rise and this is because of the support that we've seen from the government and we have to understand that right now as we're speaking this is our farm estate glorious Villa farms company were the recipient and we've been able to secure 100 million for 100 farmers via the anchor Boras program that has been put in place by the federal government and that's this, this these are the things that we've been wanting from the government and when this program came in it gave the farmers the leverage to be able to go into agriculture business, especially fish farming, they don't need to also or also at all for the feed inputs because of this loan was covering it, and this loan is at a one-digit interest rate, which is the lowest you can ever get because banks, as we all know in Nigeria today, they give between twenty percent and above. But the government was able to subsidize it for the farmers, and these are the things we're talking about. And we have our state governments fully in support of what we're doing on this farm estate. Just like um, sometimes they will go the way handing out pumping machines to farmers, which is a very very major form of expense that farmers run and these are the kind of support that we're needing and they give also and for moratoriums they offer us with services services in terms of extension services to come and check what's going on on the farm and we hold quarter meetings with the, with the state government and the federal government just to check up how the farmers are doing and right now as we speak the farm the, the state government they are acting as an off taker for we have to guarantee the farmers from the anchor Boras program. So this is a very, very huge support that the, the government is giving out to the farmers in Ogu State. And this is what we really need. That we ask that they should keep on with this support and so that agriculture can thrive in Nigeria. Earlier, you spoke about know-how in terms of for an individual that wants to go into farming. So, um, for example, so do people that want to invest in farming or start um, a farm or start any venture in agriculture, they how they get that? Know how do they probably go back to school or partner with an expert? What, is, in your own expert advice, is advisable for a Nigerian that wants to go into farming? Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, just like um, to be recognized in society, you need to have, as we know, the stereotype is you need to have a degree. And right now, the way it is now, you don't just even need to have a first degree. But people are already going into the PhD level now. So, but in this agriculture business, is more of practical knowledge. You need the practical knowledge and the theoretical knowledge. Why? So it is not necessarily you need to go back to school to go and study it. For me, as an example now, I, I finished with electrical engineering, but then I have my master's in agricultural business in view. So, um, but then I already have the practical knowledge because I've been doing this for years. I've been doing this for years. And in, in, in view of this, to have or to start any business is necessary and required that you go for training with confirmed and recognized experts in this field when you go for a training for example we were world bank certified i partook of the united nations training i was among the 50 youths that were selected by united nations food and culture organization um 2016 no 2015 so these are the kind of knowledge that i already acquired along the line while doing this so it already gave me the leverage that if anything was going to happen in this fish business i already know where to tackle it from so as a newcomer it is advisable before you start before you even lay your block before you even put your fish in the water it's advised it's advisable that you go and seek for knowledge, both practical and theoretical. It's going, to, it's going to help you in turn in reducing your loss. Talk about loss. So how do you um, mitigate or guard against risk in this kind of business? Even with the... Uh, because I know the farming business and agriculture in Nigeria is very challenging. So how do you guard against risk? And what kind of risk do you, um, do you encounter in this agricultural business? 
today. Yeah, thank you very much. And that's a very, very technical question. And the first things first, talking about, let's just go from the loss to the risk. Now, in ensuring that we make maximum profit, just like I said earlier on in the head office, we are in charge of everything that we're producing. We produce the fingerlings by ourselves. We produce the feed by ourselves. We have the etting pond here. We have the ball to support everything we are doing. So by that, by doing, by having all those in place, we've already reduced our initial cost. In the cost, and by so doing, by the time we're not investing the fish, our profit margin is usually considerably higher than somebody that does not have all this in place. That is where the technicality of the business comes in. At the same time, we've been able to reduce. We've been able to reduce the cost of what we are doing. After reducing the cost, the next thing is the risk. The major risk in fish farming is loss of fish, either natural cost or artificial cost. Artificial cost, which is human activities, probably by theft, pilfering. So the natural cost can be erosion, flooding. So that's why we look carefully at what we're doing. We've already put certain measures in place to ensure that we do not lose our fish due to erosion. Because of what we are using editing point, editing point is usually cited in semi swamp areas or swampy areas. So if you notice our ponds, they've been netted round to ensure that whatever happens, these nets keep the fish still inside the water. In the pond, we also we've been able to put the gauge pipes. At the edge of the pond, we have the gauge pipe that ensures that when the water level reaches a particular height, it begins to flow out so that it will not overflow. So these are the things we've put in place to ensure that the risk has been reduced. Also, importantly, loss of fish due to disease. The only way you can do that is probably by registering with Nigerian Cultural Insurance Company or you register with any insurance company that and that insures agricultural firms. I think uh, I know it's just about it's just Leadway and Nike, but for this farm we use Nike. Nike insurance has already covered every single farmer that is present and we have 56 farmers here as we speak. So um, for the risk, that's, that's the best way you can reduce risk. And But also if you have the ground knowledge of this business, um i can't remember last time we had loss of fish on this farm estate because of this, the practical knowledge that is in place we put everything we put every measures in place you also stated earlier about cannibalism uh, is that is that also that's also a form of risk to the farm yeah cannibalism is very very high especially for this um clara's garipinus which is the catfish the african catfish to be precise and the only way you can reduce it is by proper feeding proper feeding when you feed your fish at the right time for example we are going to witness fish feeding we feed our fish here three times by 7 30 in the morning 1 p.m and by 5 p.m this is to ensure that at every, at every point in time the fish they have something to eat rather than them going to attack each other so that's just those are just the measures you can put in place to reduce cannibalism but it cannot be totally eradicated because it's in their nature to be cannibals glorious Belua is more Belua farms is more into um aquaculture but what other form of um farming and agriculture is suitable or is the easiest for a nigerian to enter especially with no knowledge no um low knowledge on farming yeah um, there's no way we can um overlook the knowledge aspect of farming because if you do not have the knowledge of something you are definitely going to lose in that aspect especially in business and since we are being practical here it's very much advisable to the viewers out there, to anybody out here in me right now. Whenever you are going to any agricultural business, keep your money. Take it doesn't cost you anything. If you spend ten percent of the total money you want to invest in that business, go and seek for knowledge. It is better than you losing ninety percent when you enter the business without knowledge. So whatever agricultural business you, are, if you want to venture, it be it cassava, as simple as maize might even seem. There are ways about it. There are dimensions that you must go about it. Not even talk of fish that deals with life directly so i'll tell you that whatever you're doing just make sure that you really seek the knowledge you seek that knowledge is very important so whatever you're doing as i'm speaking to you now i know virtually everything that i want to happen to catfish and aside aquaculture we have the capture fishery and there are different types of aquaculture just like this one that we are doing um the etting pond we have the the one that um <clears throat> is being done the cage system which is done on water bodies the rivers you set up a cage system that one can also be done for uh, commercial agriculture aquaculture to be precise uh, so but uh, right now we're having where our vice chairman of gross Bella farms company she was at, she was in uganda last week and they were talking about the challenges that we're facing in africa 
concerning the inland fish and we discovered that there's a report that came in that the fish that are in the water bodies they have reduced drastically so we're now looking into aquaculture and efforts and and increasing the the the, the efforts and investment that is going to aquaculture because of right from time capture fish has always been more than aquaculture and now the fish is really reducing we have global warming affecting everything and so the only thing we can all do now is start putting our investment into aquaculture looking at the the cage system looking at this ethnic policy they're looking at the dam system all these are for commercial purposes but for someone that just wants to rear one or two and just for eating can just buy tank at the back of your house and do that for private that's not commercial business so you i understand that you have a farming advisory um, service or training that you offer to nigerians or interested parties can you expand on that and how how what, how do you want to take that in the coming future our company we are world bank trained we are world bank trained consultant and as i told you earlier on i'm also united nations fao trained too so we offer training services every quarter of every year and we are like the cheapest and one of the major reasons why we're able to secure the loan in the Cobras program for farmers was because um, the knowledge that the CBN have about us, that they know that, oh, these guys are the trained farmers. So we're able to put together farmers and there's no way you can access anything in Nigeria we speak now if you are not in the cooperative and if you are not undergoing best management practices training in fish farming. And this is what we offer. We offer it at a very cheap rate. The training that's coming up now is just, it's cost just 10,000 euro. And we're going to teach you the, everything that has to do with fish farming, both the fish reproduction, we teach you the management, I'm also going to put you through fish processing. I try to emphasize on the fish processing because um, value addition is what the world is talking about now. It's not just about um, how I rear my fish. Nobody really cares about the process, but more of the result. The, process, the how you read for an exam doesn't really matter, but the result that really matter. So for that, we are really, really um, appealing to the people that for as many as you are interested in fish farming, Builder Farms, we are here to train, we are here to teach, we are here to consult. Well, this is a full-time business, so we know everything and we're here to impact this knowledge back to people. This is how we, this is a little way of saying, oh, this is what we can do back, this is CSR, I'm a form of CSR. But then it just comes as a token. I mean, no, um, anything of value is never free. So, and it is just like my chancellor is saying, it is shameful. It is foolishness to be shameful of what is gainful. So yeah, if you want to go into fish farming, come for the training. Our training is coming up April 24th to 27th four days intensive training we start in the morning by 10 finish by four o'clock and on the fourth day is practical session everybody's going to be inside the pond teaching you how to fish and that's just it what's your advice for young nigerians that want to go into the agricultural business your candid advice in terms of i know it's not going to be so easy and it takes a lot of work but what is your general advice for nigerians in that line um for the youth out there, you all know that back in the 80s, the present president and our previous president, our pre previous past leaders, they've been telling us that the youth are the future leaders. It is now. This is the future we are in now. But yet, the youth have not still taken up the ends of affairs in this country. Not, not to talk against anything that is going on on social media, but we are easily carried away with the things that are not really important and we are not addressing the issues and uh, in as much as this is going to bring a little bit of controversy when i saw a video clip of the people that welcomed the big brother nigeria um, protestants it was very appealing because i knew when there was a problem in nigeria that we needed people to go and riot with our famous two-face nobody showed up we just need to be serious in this country Let's just put the agriculture business aside and let's talk about what's going on in the society for now. The youth, we need to be serious with this country and take it by force. The Bible makes us understand that the violent take it by force. I'm not telling anybody to be violent here. But then if we're not being serious with ourselves, with our future, nobody's going to give us anything. When our when Buari was head of state, when Obasio was head of state, they were in their 20s. The present president of France is still a very he's a very young man. So if we do not take this thing serious i don't think there's anything we need to be discussing here so the first thing we have to talk about to the youth is are you ready to be serious are you ready to take your own future in your own ends are you ready to be the destiny molder if you're not ready to do that 
I think we need to go back to our bedroom. We need to go back and go and rewrite the table. So now you are ready to take your life serious. Are you ready to go into agriculture? What do you need? The first thing is this: you already have the passion. Once the passion is there, your know, major challenge is going to be the funding. That's why I always advise that start small. I know you quest next thing uh, you to tell you how do you want me to get money to go big? No, don't go big. If when you are talking to people, they tell you how do you raise capital? You go through family and friends, raise one or two. There are a lot of small, small businesses you can do to raise capital. When I was in final yes, I did I sold um I sold pepper soup, I did fish grill, I did fries because I'm very good at grilling of fish and pepper soup. Because of this knowledge, I already had the knowledge. If you do not seek knowledge, I don't think there's any need looking for you for looking for fund. I had money to do it, but then I felt that for me to do it big in that trade fair, I had to bring my friends along. I brought some of my female cosmates that put in money. So that was what funded it. So I started like that. I was able to rake in so much money to raise for a particular period of time. So we as youths, we didn't show we just need to look inwards. That's just what I can tell anybody. Once you have the passion to do a Greek, that is good, that's the stepping stone. But that's all you need. Once you have that, look inwards. Because the next problem is going to be funds, financial problem. So when you look inwards, look inward of yourself. That what how can I raise funds? Once you can think of how you can raise funds, start small. Don't go all big. Because if you go big, you lose big. So let's forget the whole uh, go big or go. No, it doesn't happen like that in a Greek. If you go big, you are going to lose big. And once you lose big, you go home eventually. So just let's start small. When you start small, um, there's a lot of respect in humble beginnings. There's a lot of respect in humble beginnings. And whatever you are doing, do not. It is foolishness to be shameful. Whatever you are doing, that Greek. Always be proud of yourself. Wherever you are, I tell people I'm the great farmer. Yes. What are you doing? I'm a farmer. Forget the old packaging. Packaging and packaging day. But when it's time to be a farmer, it's time to be a farmer. So once you're a youth, don't be ash- don't be shy. Don't be ashamed to tell people what you're doing. Because you never can know who's going to help you out. So for the youth out there. Future is as there's a wide gap. We suffer from food insecurity in Nigeria. There's a wide gap for us to fill up. Right now, we import about 3.1. We need our 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 needs of fish in Nigeria right now is about 3.1 million tons. But then we import about 2.9. There's a lot of deficit. We're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be self-sufficient. That's the goal. The goal is to be self-sufficient. So we are not yet attaining self-sufficiency. There's still a wide gap. There's still an opportunity that is there for us to assess. And fish farming is a value chain. Because of course transportation, because of course those are selling on petrol, because of course you as an engineer that's coming to repair pumping machine, because of course those are processing fish. So fish farming is, is just lucrative and cuts across every area that if you are interested in making money, interested in being somebody relevant in this country, is something I can advise you to go into. You just need to go through the right set of people. 2016 labor and GDP distribution show that we had like over 30% of Nigerians that are employed in the agricultural sector, either in the subsistence or commercial sec- um, sector of the <laughs> agri- industry. And we had, and the GDP distribution for agriculture was a little bit over 21%. So how can the government, you know, how can the government or we Nigerians basically, you know, make agri more effective and have a relevant um, distribution in the GDP to come. Yeah, yeah. As an engineering graduate and now a farmer, I so much believe in efficiency. And looking at that statistics that I just laid on the table, I can tell you that what's lacking is efficiency. When the input is not um, almost as the output, this is the problem. And this problem is not totally on the government because of you as a farmer. You are the one that planted these crops. So I don't have put this input into the water. They're about. So we are, maybe the people were not just putting as much effort as we are doing. So just and all these still boys and for example now, the cassava yield is, is, is very is low is very very below what is supposed to be. Normally we're supposed to be having about um 20 tons or 30 tons per per hectare. But then in this part of Nigeria, the southwestern part, you have about 10 tons five tons so you can see that there's a problem and this has to do with research so wherever the government is going to come in we need the government to set up research institutes for us so that we can go in and increase our yield we do not really invest in research in this country and that's what has always been a major problem and this is what the um, the developed countries have edge over everywhere with the third world countries so just the government is just putting more effort for us they've been trying along the line so we just need more research institutes that can make us increase our output and efficiency is going to be increased in the long run whereby um, affecting our gdp 
So thank you very much, Bolan, for your input on agriculture. So how can we reach you and how, for people who are interested in having a discussion with you for um, agricultural advice in Nigeria and how to start up, especially for young Nigerians, because, you know, economic village is focused on mainly young Nigerians. Yeah, first of all, I want to appreciate the economic village and it was very, very, I wouldn't lie to you, I've been very, very impressed, I've been overwhelmed when, when, when I got the message that you're going to interview me. Um, this other acts were coming, I didn't charge attack to that. You guys were like, no, it is free. I'm like, ha, who does free business like that? But then I really enjoy, I really appreciate what you guys have done. And I pray that um, you will see the yield at the end of the day. And uh, for supporting we that were young entrepreneurs too. Well, on Instagram, I'm the great farmer. The great farmer, just the great farmer. And on Twitter, same great farmer, but the GR with the eight, the great farmer. So, and that's it. Um, my DMs are open except for when I'm in the pond, which you do expect to put my phone inside the water. And aside that, I think um, I'm open for discussions. But if you have any inquiries, you want to understand what's going on in the agri industry, I'm, I'm close to some people and I think I know a few people in the agri business that can help out. So that's it. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm Bolan the Great Farmer and this is Economic Village right here on Global Farm Estates. Yeah. Yeah.